Welcome back to Design Smith. I've had a couple of requests for me to recreate this poster, so that's what we're gonna do today in Illustrator and Photoshop. Before we get started, please subscribe to support the channel. All right, so what we've got here is type just laid out in Illustrator and then carried over into Photoshop to apply the effects. And really the best way to do this is just to directly recreate the poster itself. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna lay down my type here and I'm not gonna worry about matching the font. I'm just going to get the type down itself, the actual contents. All right, let's lower this opacity down and lock that layer. And then we'll move this over here. Like I said, I'm not worried about getting the exact font down. I just want to get the content down and we will recreate the effect. Okay, all of our type is laid down right there, at least for the main type. And then I'll lay down some type right here. I'm not gonna worry about recreating the type because I don't know exactly what it says. And so I'm just gonna draw a text box here and let Illustrator fill in the type for me. And then I'll just duplicate this right over here. And then the same thing for all these other areas. Then I'll adjust this right here and do the same thing for down here. We'll just make this a little smaller. All right, so all of our type is laid down. Let's go ahead and unlock everything right here. I'm gonna lock that back again, and let's bring this in to where it's actually on our poster. And for this particular effect, what I'd like to do is just kind of bring the letters a little bit closer to each other, almost to where they're touching in some areas. They don't all have to touch each other, but doing that will just make the effect a little bit cooler. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is grab each one of the large type blocks right here, and I'm gonna hit copy. And now we're here in Photoshop, and we're gonna paste this as a smart object and hit okay. And now we're gonna go back here into Illustrator and grab these pieces of text. And we're gonna paste that as a smart object. And now let's enlarge this up a little bit and get this placed correctly. All right, that placement in general is looking good. Let's just kind of move this around a little bit to get it as close as we can. All right, so we have all of our type laid down and right now everything is black. So what we need to do is change the colors obviously, add a background color and add in all of our effects. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go down to our background layer. I'm gonna create a new solid color layer right here. And I'm not gonna do 100% black. I'm gonna bring this up to about 10% black. And let's go ahead and name our layers here. I'm gonna name this large text and small text. And let's double click on our large text layer. I'm gonna click on color overlay. And now we'll assign this a color and I might as well do as close as we can. It's kind of like a yellowish green. I'm just gonna go here in Illustrator and color drop that green and then we'll just paste that right in there. And then we'll hit okay. And now I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt on my keyboard and hover over that effects icon and drag that up to the small text. And that applies all of the current layer styles to whatever layer style I apply it to. All right, so there's a couple of things that we need to do here, especially with the large type. So we're gonna go ahead and do a couple of blurs. And so let's go up here to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Field Blur. So as you'll see here, we already have kind of like a small blur happening to everything. And that's really kind of what we want, but I wanna just bring it up just a little bit more and let's bring it up to about a 50. So that looks really good overall. However, there are some areas that we need to apply a little bit more of a selective blur. And what's gonna allow us to do that is the tilt shift blur. So let's click on this checkbox right here and then open up this little carrot and that's gonna open up the options for the tilt shift blur. So what we need to do is grab this little icon right here where we can rotate this because what we have here are thresholds and this area here is going to allow us to kind of taper off the intensity in this area so let's increase our blur to about 70 and then let's move this right here i'm just kind of eyeballing this right now i'm not trying to create the exact same effect that our original poster has but i'm just trying to teach you how to apply this effect and so let's bring this up here it's going to raise up that intensity right there in that section and then we'll do kind of the same thing over here and we'll really bring up the intensity in this area right here. And I think this is looking good, so we'll hit okay. All right, and now we need to select the small text and go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. So for the small type, let's go ahead and look at the smallest text right here. We wanna make sure that that is still legible. So I'm gonna bring this down to probably about a three because we're gonna be adding some effects here and we want the text to be able to take on those effects. All right, I'm gonna collapse up my effects down here in these layers. All right, so let's select our top layer and we're gonna create a new layer on top of that and we're gonna call that half tone and hit okay. And now let's fill this layer with 50% gray and hit okay. And we're gonna go over here to filter and filter gallery. And under the sketch section right here, we're gonna click on half tone pattern. 
I'm going to leave the size at 1 and the contrast at 15 and the pattern is dot. Now let's hit OK. It's harder to see that when we have it zoomed out, so let's go ahead and zoom all the way in at 100%. You can see that we have a half tone that is sitting on top of this entire design, but of course we can't see any of our elements underneath this layer, so we have to use blending modes. And so with my half tone layer selected, we're going to hold down shift and press the plus button, and that's going to allow us to cycle through our blending modes. And I'm going to look for one that will preserve the colors while also showing the pattern. And overlay is looking really good. Soft light is giving us a little bit less contrast there. So I think that we're probably going to go with overlay, unless any of the other ones look really good. Subtract is good, but it's getting a little too dark in those areas. All right, so I think we're going to go with overlay. And we can see that halftone pattern in the large text areas and the smaller text areas. And one last thing that I want to do is add another layer, and we're going to name this grain. And we're going to fill that again with 50% gray and hit OK. And let's go up here to filter and camera raw filter. And we're going to go over here to effects, go down here to grain, and I'm going to bring this all the way up to 100. And I'm going to bring the size and the roughness both to 50. And I'm going to add a vignette of about negative 50. And then hit OK. And now we have a nice layer of grain right there. And you can see that vignette around the corners. And now we're going to change our blending mode to overlay. And here's our final design where we have those selective areas that are being blurred, along with the halftone pattern and the grain layer that's sitting on top of it. This was a lot of fun to do. I love this type of effect. If you enjoyed this video and it was informative to you, please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.